Welcome to Newly Listed. I'm your host, Barrington Miller, and today I'm here with Timothy Coe from Ethion Biomedical, newly listed on the Canadian Securities Exchange. Welcome to the show, Timothy. Hey, thank you, Barrington. It's a pleasure to be here. Tell us a little bit about your company. What do you yeah, do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the first, uh, good. thank you for the opportunity. Um, so Entheon Biomedical, uh, we're uh, doing drug discovery in the psychedelic field. Um, yeah, to address an absolutely massive problem. Um, so drug addiction. Um, I lost my brother to drug addiction uh, in March of last year. And yeah, it was just a case study in the limitations of conventional methods of treating uh, drug addiction. And yeah, I think as a society, we've come to expect, um, have expectations around drug addiction where the success rates of current treatments are so low that we um, often see people afflicted with drug addiction as you know, a life sentence uh, that potentially will become a fatal for them. So Antheon was created to directly address that and to invert the expectations around drug addiction um, going from something that's, you know, really low levels of efficacy to something that really addresses at the core the underlying issues that, um, you know, spur that uh, drug seeking, uh, drug addictive behavior. We're seeing a lot of companies, and I mean, we at the Canadian Securities Exchange, uh, we're seeing a lot of companies that are beginning to list that fall under this category. What is your differentiator uh, when it comes to this operation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think we have a number of key differentiators, um, you know, first of which is um, the sort of, I guess, the skill and adeptness of our team. If you look at our scientific advisory board, it is comprised of some of the most well-known and accomplished names in the psychedelic research space. Um, yeah, and uh, these people represent um, Johns Hopkins University, the Imperial College of London, um, as well as the UBC Pharmacology uh, Department. And I think altogether, um, it really represents, um, the, you know, the leading edge of thought in that space. Um, and I guess another really key part of what we do is the molecule that we've decided to use. Um, we've decided to use DMT for the purposes of treating addiction. Um, and DMT, for those that aren't super aware, is the you know active psychoactive in ayahuasca. And I guess people are more generally aware of what ayahuasca is, but it's a you know psychoactive brew that's been used for millennia to treat all matters of I guess diseases of despair, uh, matters of a psychological or emotional nature. Um, and so DMT is this massively powerful, um, it's a really well tolerated psychoactive molecule. Um, and of course, you know, we can't bring along that, that sort of organic jungle brew for the purposes of treating these medical conditions. So what we're doing um, to adhere to the, you know, rigorous regulatory sort of um, framework that exists, we're taking uh, pure synthetic DMT um, and finding a way to administer it gradually, safely, and in a really well tolerated way. Um, and we think there are some really um, key value features to that um, that are not seen in you know, psilocybin or LSD, uh, namely the ability to uh, really tailor the way that the experience is shaped, um, as well as to keep that person in that therapeutically useful um, dose range for a set period of time that is very um, adjustable and can be titrated in the event that a negative adverse reaction takes place. Um, unlike psilocybin, which can take um, anywhere from four to eight hours, during which time if that person has a you know, unusual or negative experience, it's really hard to bring them down. Um, we think from the perspective of safety and scalability, it's really useful to have uh, something that uh, you know, can be controlled um, and shortened in terms of its duration. And in the event that that uh, experience becomes bad, um, we can titrate it or cease it altogether and have that person return to a functional baseline uh, without any sort of traumatic uh, event taking place. Wow, this is um, that's that's really really good, and you're you're filling a void and filling a really big niche. Um, earlier, you mentioned some members of your team. I was wondering if you could elaborate and tell us a little bit about the people that you work with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, on the management side, we have uh, Dr. Andrew Hegley. Um, he represents the UBC Pharmacology Department. He's an adjunct professor there. Um, he worked previously in cannabis alongside um, some of our advisors like uh, Dr. Michael Walker and uh, Louis Franciosi. Um, and combined, they represent a broad history of experience with, uh, you know, bringing drugs from uh, sort of concept all the way to market, uh, market authorization to sell. Um, and so, yeah, 
represent that really strong preclinical and pharmacological team. Um, and that's supported by, you know, some of those names that are, um, you know, the ring bells in the psychedelic space, such as Robin Card Harris from the Imperial College of London. Uh, he runs their um, psychedelic research unit there. Um, and they're at the leading edge of the science as it uh, pertains to, you know, psychedelic research and specifically DMT research. And they've been invaluable um, in informing our protocols and the very specifics of how the drug is administered. Um, and on the American side, we have people like uh, Matthew Johnson. Uh, he's, uh, you know, also really well-renowned uh, psychedelic researcher who's done amazing work specifically in addiction um, with regard to nicotine cessation, as well as investigation of other types of um, addiction. So, um, you know, and of course, people like uh, Christopher Timmerman, Malin Utog, uh, you know, that the list goes on. And, you know, Aside from just being people of high name recognition, they have been really instrumental in defining the particulars about how best to structure a clinically useful um, addiction uh, cessation uh, type of protocol. And for current investors and soon to be investors, are there any milestones that you're able to talk about? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're blessed to have some really amazing partners um, that are working with us. And so um, critical to the clinical trials uh, drug approval process are GMP. Um, so uh, good manufacturing practices, um, sort of pure uh, synthetic drug supply. Um, we anticipate the receipt of our first research batch quite soon, um, as well as you know the commencement of our uh, human safety trial. Uh, with the people from uh, CHDR, the Center for Human Drug Research, uh, massively, um, you know, accomplished uh, research group out of the Netherlands. Uh, we're going to be conducting our first uh, human clinical trial in uh, estimated Q2 of 2021. Um, and that will be instrumental in establishing that very basic safety that's necessary uh, to serve as that sort of pharmacological basis that we can then submit to regulators. And last but not least, why did you choose to go public? Absolutely. It's a really good question. It's been volleyed at us uh, quite often. But, you know, I think we understand that the realities of the drug development process are very capital intensive, very time and capital intensive. Um, and we believe that the strength of our clinical development pathway um, has enough significant de-risking milestones uh, that will highlight to investors that, yes, as these guys uh, and gals move along this process um, and demonstrate uh, you know, pretty uh, empirically that the path they've chosen is in, in fact safe and logical, um, you know, we will inspire investor confidence and allow us to raise additional funds for our clinical development um, you know, at higher valuations, uh, thereby you know, supporting or benefiting our initial shareholders. Um, and giving uh, the market opportunities to get involved in what we believe is a pretty revolutionary um, drug product. Well, Timothy, uh, on behalf of the Canadian Securities Exchange, I want to say thank you. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Thank you for taking the time. And we wish you nothing but continued success. For those uh, people that wish to trade <laughs> your stock, what is your symbol? Uh, we are trading under ENBI. And they can be found at the Canadian Securities Exchange. Thank you once again. This has been an episode of Newly Listed.